Okay, next on the docket is rounding over the edge of the Formica. So we just put a simple quarter inch round over bit on the router table. And I like to do it on the router table rather than with a uh, handheld router because I've noticed even my plastic bases that are really smooth, um, I don't want any chance of scratching up the surface, you know. So my nice smooth tabletop seems to be a better way to go. So I'll do that real quick. over here and now you can see that the edge is nice and rounded over so what we'll do now next rather is we're going to use just a regular drill drill a hole in the middle of the uh, top of the formica and then we're going to take a flush cut bit and we're going to go to the edge of the cutout the circle cutout and we're going to make that perfect circle so that, once again, light can get in and we can set our mirror inside the mirror box whenever it comes time. And then after that, we will round that edge over. And then, we're going to move on to the rocker box. So, almost there. Okay, so it's time to route out the opening on top of the mirror box right here on the black Formica. So, what I'm going to do is... I've just got like a 5 8 spade bit in here. You could use a Forstner bit or any type of drill bit. I'm going to go a little bit more toward the... I went about 4 inches inside. I don't want to get too close to the edge because I don't want the Formica to chip out. So plug in the table router here. Make sure the top is nice and clean. Once again, I don't want any chance of scratching it. And in my router table, I just have a straight bit with an edge bearing on top. And I want to push against that bit. So I'm going to take the small hole that I drilled. Okay. So that is now on the mirror box. I will start the router and we're going to flush cut the opening. have cut that flush and so we don't have any sharp edges what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that same quarter inch round over bit in we'll go ahead round that over and doing the same exact process you just saw so I won't even make a video for that and then what I'm actually going to do is take this over to our uh, oscillating sander and kind of show you what I do to slightly enlarge this hole because we're going to end up needing a mirror box cover and the kind I make just kind of cinch down in the hole so I don't want this to be exactly 17 inches. It's going to be like 17 and a, about a 30 second. So we'll do that next. Okay, so I have just a small uh, little movable tabletop oscillating sander here I use to uh, sand any kind of rounded edge or curved edge. Spin it around a few times and that's usually just enough. So that's what we'll do now. Okay, so we have to mark the four spots for the truss to connect on top of the mirror box. To do that, I'm just going to use a simple tri-square. Without getting into too much detail, these videos are mainly to focus on the mechanics of a thing rather than why we're doing it this way or the measurements that we're using to get these numbers. Um, so if you have further questions regarding that, feel free to email me. Give me some time to get back to you because 
we get a number of emails. So what I'm going to do is I'm using this tri-square and I'm just setting it to three inches. And I will take a pencil and this is how I'm going to identify the four spots that we're going to end up drilling for. So the we've got the tri-square set to three inches, got our pencil here, and we're going to go to the edge of the mirror box, hold the pencil against the rule, we're going to make a line. Now we'll do it again this way to cross that line. And as you can see, we have the X right there. So that point is going to be where we drill for the fastener for the collapsible truss. So we'll do it on this side. So we got one, two, three, four. So there's our four connection points for the collapsible truss. Next, next video, we're going to actually take a spade bit and drill through there with a half inch and we'll attach the fasteners, the brad hole T-nuts, and that'll be next. Okay, so before we drill the four pilot holes where our collapsible truss pieces are ultimately going to connect and disconnect, I'm going to use a punch and I'm going to put a divot on the points that I'm ultimately going to drill out because drill bits do not like to stay steady on Formica. They slide around and without a nice little hole there, they're going to slide around on me. Now that we have divots marked, I'm going to use two squares. That will help keep me vertical because this is kind of an oblong piece and it would be awkward at the drill press. So I'm just going to do it the old fashioned way. Now to finish it off, I'm going to go with the larger drill bit. I'm not going to quite go half an inch, even though those fasteners are close to half an inch, or the T-nuts rather. I'm going to go 15 32nd is the size drill bit. Now the reason for that is the more accurate we make these four markings, so to speak, the places where our collapsible truss is going to connect, the less worry about collimation in between setups you're going to have. So in other words, if three of these holes is at the same distance from the middle of where the mirror would be, but the fourth hole is off, and when you think about it, every time you set up, if we turn that truss, you're going to need to collimate. It's not going to be accurate and repeatable. Um, you know, there's no way to make it 100% perfect. There's always going to be a slight inaccuracy in there, and that's just what we deal with whenever we set up and break down truss-style telescopes. But we can make it very, very minimal, and that's the goal here. And actually, I'll need a drill with a half-inch chuck. Okay, so we have our half-inch chuck, our 15 30 seconds inch drill bit, and we have our pilot holes drilled. So the way I do this without getting tear out so I'm just going to start on the top, and I'm just going to drill enough that I put a hole in the Formica. I don't want to go all the way through, so I usually put it on the lower setting. There's one. Two. Three and four. Now I'm going to go down just about a sixteenth of an inch more and make sure I've got a hole in the in the top of the wood. 
The key is to take your time and not drill all the way through because that's how you'll get blowout. Now we'll flip the mirror box. And go ahead and go all the way through. There's one. Two. And that's it. Now we have successfully drilled all four holes on the top of the mirror box. The last thing we'll do is end up putting the brad hole T-nuts on the underside, connecting them. But I typically paint um, and finish before I do that. That's always the last thing I do. And then, of course, we still have to make the fan box and the mirror cell drill the holes for the mirror cell but again i usually do that after i finish believe it or not so there we have it um from here we're going to go ahead and make sure i don't have anything left here yeah why not let's move on to the uh, rocker box